This is a judgment-free zone, right? Can I just be a horrible person for a second? So I'm trying to be all woke and open-minded and understanding, but every time I see a Blue Lives Matter flag or a Make America Great Again sticker, let's just say I don't think good thoughts. And I might even give the middle finger, but that's not the point. The point is that I always thought that hate and bigotry was something that conservatives did. But for every conservative sticker I saw, I would find a liberal one that pokes right back. It's like we're in some ping pong game of provoking the other side. And this isn't just a liberal or conservative thing or a political thing. It just seems like we've lost the ability to have respectful conversations with each other. Irrefutable facts. Stop you can't using tell me to spin stop. And no you don't want anybody problem with at the, the door concept saying, of a oh, yeah, can I, no, you those are not fake stats. All, you don't have the right to Americans, go tell me. You're, not, no, you, but then you you're peddling in these, is, in these dishonesties. Is it really that hard to have open conversations? Are we really that different from each other? Or is the media just exacerbating those differences? I don't know what TV shows you're watching, but I don't really see that many examples of that. I'm ready to choke this out. Hey, Shut up so you can unconfuse your brain. But the one exception is Queer Eye. The original show was fighting for tolerance. Our fight is for acceptance. Well, the perception right now, especially between black people and cops, it's, it's, it's tension. Everybody wants to talk, but nobody wants to listen. So I reached out to Tan France to get his advice on how to connect with people who might disagree with you. On the show, have you ever been met with comments or criticisms or any sort of yeah. racism or homophobia? Yeah. yeah. I was asked if I was a terrorist because they didn't realize that I was Middle Eastern. They assumed I was South American of some sort. My accent throws people off. And so, yeah, they didn't know where I was from. So when I made it clear that I was Middle Eastern, two of our heroes had asked, are you a terrorist? And it was a very honest question for them and they weren't trying to be funny and our show is about bridging these divides and we are meeting with a lot of republicans and this just this isn't meant to be a liberals versus republican show at all but it gives us an opportunity for a very open conversation and we're not just talking to that person we're talking to everybody else at home who's watching thinking we feel this way about gay people middle eastern people mm -hmm. black people there are subjects like the black lives matter uh, subject mm -hmm. that we need to tackle maybe we can talk about islamophobia in the next season right. but so those kind of questions are real for people People. The moment where Karamo gets yeah. pulled over. We're getting pulled over. He's like, what's going on here? <laughs> we uh, make over straight guys. Make over straight guys, yeah, okay. You guys clearly are... Nervous. Nervous. Mm -hmm. What's going mm -hmm. through your mind? What's going through my mind is they've either seen me or Karamo, because I'm in the back visible, Karamo's in the front visible, and they're gonna ask us to get out of this car. And once you get out of the car, there's trouble. Um, and somebody comments too, like, I don't want to get shot. Yeah. Um, Jonathan says, um, no, don't go out of the car, don't go out of the car. And the police officer is saying, can you stop? Like, uh, he has to get out of the car. And Jonathan's like, I just don't want him to get shot. Rightly so. When you step out of the car, that spells trouble. Right. And so we all started to get really tense when he asked to uh, Karama to get out of the car. It was an incredibly real situation for us. Yes, the camera crew knew what was happening. We didn't, so for as far as we were concerned, trouble was afoot. Right. So it was just building and building. And right. so the relief of realizing that he was actually part of the show. Is his name Corey? Because I'm his nominator. No! Oh, you can't do that! Brown people. It was such a relief. Yeah. And so afterwards we were fuming, saying, this can never happen again. This right. wasn't okay. You don't know what it feels like to be a person of color and get pulled over. Because we didn't want to film the next day. We're like, we're done. Like, yeah. that's it. Thankfully it turned out great in the end, but uh, because it's a conversation that needs to be had. What is it like walking into somebody's house or life or situation where they might not see eye to eye with you? I find a way to connect with them on a human level. Mm. It's not just rehearsed or practiced. There's certain things that I do that hopefully does disarm a person. I look them in the eye. I'll give them a pat on the shoulder to, to make sure they know that I'm there for them, that mm -hmm. I want to support them through this. So it gives them an opportunity to talk about whatever they want to talk about. It humanizes me, it humanizes them. Right. And then we can have a real conversation. Yeah, totally. And it's almost like hate begets hate. So it's like yeah. if they're throwing yes. slurs at you and you come back with like, you're a bigot, it's yeah. like, what who's does that achieve? winning? Tan gave me great advice. 
Look people in the eye, touch them on the shoulder, make a real effort to connect with people who we might disagree with. I think overcoming our differences with open and honest conversations is the only way we're gonna make progress as a culture and a country. Before I talked to Tan, I would have thought that that sounds like a really cheesy campaign slogan. But now I really believe it. That's just my opinion. What do you think?